Welcome to Profiter's overview of Sage ERP ACPAC uh, version 6. What we're going to do today is uh, just log into uh, version 6 of uh, the Sage ERP ACPAC uh, software program. And we're going to have a look at um, the web portal. Um, the web portal is the new Java Google Web Toolkit uh, web-based um, ERP application released by Sage been released towards the end of uh, 2010. Um, this new web portal uh, is essentially the future of ERP and uh, you know all the processing and all the screens etc will be delivered by the uh, web browser whether it's Internet Explorer um, or Safari. Now I'm viewing um, I'm viewing the application here on a Mac and I'm actually in a terminal session on our hosted server um, and I'm accessing it through Internet Explorer. So you can see that, um, you know, it's quite flexible. You can see there the Mac in the background. Um, you see the Mac in the background and uh, you can see I'm also operating in a terminal session. So let's uh, start off with logging in to uh, the sample company here. So you can have multiple different companies set up within the system here. Uh, we have a number of sort of demo uh, companies here available for you to look at. Um, the date uh, for the sample data here that's set up is 2020 and we've also set up Australian sample data to uh, to to this system as well. So I'll just log in. Now uh, as we uh, log in here we log into um, essentially the what's called the portal or the dashboard section um, uh, of of the Sage ERP system. Now you can see here I have my home tab, so it's very much a browser-based um, software package. This uh, software package was built from the ground up to be a web-based application, and they allow you to add um, additional uh, tabs here onto your home page for your Sage ERP. Uh, you see here these particular um, uh, dashboard items, they're called snapshots. Uh, they provide a snapshot of your uh, company's information and they're totally configurable. The three snapshots that I have set up here at the moment uh, income statement, age payables over here and balance sheet and you can see here that the uh, income statement shows me a breakdown here of my gross profit uh, and my cost of sale so it gives it in a percentage uh, terms uh, uh, as well as a whole dollar amount and you'll notice when I mouse over um, the particular item, it shows me the values. Same over here, you'll see for the balance sheet, I've got you know cash and cash equivalents, inventory, um, and net fixed assets. Um, the nice thing about this uh, this uh, snapshot is that you'll notice when I click on a particular section on a graph, I can actually uh, drill into that um, particular item further if I want to have a look at that information. And uh, also there's other items here. These are, uh, items aren't um, shown on the graph, uh, but available separately. <coughs> now you see here, uh, I have the gross profit and it opens it up in a new tab. So it's showing me what items are making up my gross profit. And there's drill down items available here on the left hand side as well. So I can drill down on that and uh, view particular uh, types of gross profit items uh, as they appear in my uh, general ledger. Also any of these uh, reports here is available for export. Um, you know you can export these as crystal reports, Microsoft Excel, Word etc. So uh, once you do that export it will show you effectively exactly what you're seeing on the screen but in Excel format as well. And of course you can also, uh, you can also print that off as well. Uh, to close down that particular drill down, I just hit the X and it takes me back um, back to my snapshot. Uh, if I want to have a look at here, say for example, my interest expense. Again, I just click on that particular hyperlink and I can see I have some interest in a long-term debt item. These snapshots are um, quite configurable. You not only can you refresh them and open the report, uh, you can print off the snapshot, you can edit the title of the snapshot, um, as well as here in the configuration, um, uh, choose or override uh, which particular fiscal 
year in which a particular month is shown as well. I'm also able to add snapshots um, uh, onto my desktop. There are some standard ones, and you know, Sage is actually improving these at the moment. They have some sample ones or, or um, stock standard ones available for accounts payable, accounts receivable, and general ledger. Um, but they will be adding more as they go as they go along, and, and a company like uh, Provider, Provider.com.au, we can also create these snapshots. As I mentioned earlier, these snapshots are created in Google Web Toolkit, so um, you know they're created with the latest latest Google uh, Google Web technology. But I just want to select here on the general ledger, and I'd like to, uh, or, or let's say actually accounts receivable. And um, I'd actually like to add on my uh, days receivables outstanding. Uh, I can just click on the plus sign here. It tells me, you know, an explanation of what is that portal and what's the average number of days uh, it takes to collect the receivables each month. Now I'll just add that onto the home page. You'll see over here now that. Um, the days received by outstanding has been added on to my home page. Uh, so now I have a new snapshot on there along with my other snapshots. You can move those around um, however you like just by uh, dragging. I'm just moving that over here like so. Um, if you'd like to, to reorganize that. Um, here it tells me my receivables uh, outstanding is 196 days. Um, probably not, not that not that great but the nice thing about it here is it tells me my uh, formula so it's quite useful you know for management or executive that maybe you want to confirm how have we how have we arrived at that figure so it tells me there it's my ending AR balance um, in my ledger over the annual billings times 365 uh, days and there's actually how it's calculated the figure to arrive at that 196 um, and there's my annual billings of 69,000 and my ending balance of 37,000. It puts a nice graphical format as well, so we see it's been rising up there. And, uh, but now it's been making some downward movement, which is good. Um, all right, I'll just uh, finish with modifying that portal. Um, you'll see um, uh, the icons on the top here are effectively um, the you know the screens that you uh, access the you know the ledger modules for example, uh, if you go into the general ledger batch list here, and you want to view the general ledger batch list, you can actually uh, click on that particular screen. That will open up um, your GL batch list here in the web browser, and you can scroll through and you know review your GL items. Um, you know in this particular case, this is the journal entries. And effectively, you see on the screen here, this is how you do a, a general ledger journal entry. And you're able to go through here, look at your different batches, but also create new new batches here, you know, new GL journal. The nice thing about the Say GRP ACPAC system is it's very user friendly. So, um, you know, you'll see here that it, you, know, you can enter in the general ledger uh, values here, a day here, and a period, a source code as well for journal entry. And you can do the quick mode as well and just start entering in the journals. Debits create as much balance. You add that in and uh, post, the, post the entry and away you go. Now, uh, each of the uh, sub-ledgers are available here on my shortcuts. So um, what I've actually done uh, it's just added a number of uh, particular processes within say Jackpack ERP, you know, general ledger accounts payable, accounts receivable. They also reflected over here in the tasks. So you'll see uh, for each of the ledger items, you know, right through from accounts payable, accounts receivable, bank services, common service, which is includes your tax, general ledger, inventory control, order, entry, project, and job costing, and purchase orders. I can go in here and I can actually um, view my uh, process within say GRP ACPAC by task. This particular case here and this standard system is shown here by function. So for example, I would go and do an invoice entry. But you can create and customize your tasks however you want. So if somebody in your company 
Um, you know, maybe they're an accountant and they, they do invoice entry, plus they do reports, plus trial balance, etc. You can collaborate all those different tasks um, into one workflow and you can add that workflow into your desktop here and you'll see it's very web-based, so it's hyperlink entry. So in the case of, you know, accounts payable, I can go here to invoice entry. And there's my invoice entry screen. I can just scroll through the batches that are in the system um, to see some uh, uh, entries that are available there as well. You see that's how you enter an invoice. Again, very user-friendly screens. Uh, here's your option here to uh, customize your shortcuts as well. So once again, I go in, I can create my own categories, this particular standard one set up, match the functional areas of say GRP ACPAC, you know, accounts payable right through to CRM. Nice thing is, you know, you can have your business intelligence, your CRM, your project and job costing, you can have everything uh, built onto one customized web-based screen. It's totally tailorable. You can use the standard uh, functional setup that I have here as well, straight out of the box. Okay, I'll just click on uh, done there. Um, some of the other nice things you can do here in your Sage ERP uh, dashboard. Uh, there's a bunch of standard reports available in the system as well. Once again, you can go on and create those uh, reports. Um, it not only includes the business intelligence, also CRM reports built in there as well. And you can also add in additional reports here as you create them. For example, you know, if you create new business intelligence reports, and a report, you know, a report doesn't matter whether it's a report or a query, you can put it on the desktop here. Let's have a look at, uh, let's say, General Ledger. We'll just have a look at a simple trial balance. So I'll go away here and give me some um, parameters for me to generate that report. If I just click print to accept the default parameters, they'll run that from May 2020. Again, there's my crystal report. Once again, I can export that trial balance to a PDF, Microsoft Excel, and so on. Very user friendly. Right, um, and the last thing I'd like to show you in this particular session uh, is the inquiry. Um, essentially, this is online queries. So you can go in and write your own queries. There are some standard queries are built into the system. Um, for example, if I want to have a look at AP vendors and transactions, um, and vendor documents in functional currency, and vendor documents in home currency as well. So I just click on the standard one that's built in there for AP. There's some filters already built in here. I can search by vendor number uh, between a first and last, uh, and also a document type as well. Um, the nice thing here is you'll see uh, I've done a, a query here uh, just to basically on all vendor numbers by document type. So that's quite quite a um, lengthy uh, query. But you see if I, I choose here document type uh, includes and say for example I only want to show any credit notes. Just untick the other document items. And I'll add that filter and I'll submit that query. Now this will show me now only the credit notes that are sitting in my system. Um, they're the default columns that show um, in my query results, but actually I can go down here and customize that as well. Now when I uh, call up the customization uh, of the results, it actually allows me to uh, choose which particular columns and which particular fields uh, I can show on that particular query. And nicely, um, you know, I can print that out or export that out as well. Straight out to Excel, CSV or PDF. Again, just print that off, so I want to print that straight out. Um, just print that out nicely as a PDF for me, for me to send in my printer or send via email. 
And here's how I customize the various t uh, tables of fields. So again, if I want to see vendor number, vendor name, account set, um, currency, I'm not interested in seeing currency, uh, but I am interested in seeing document, document and date, and probably document uh, total, I'm not interested in that, I'm not interested in the order number either. Just click on OK. Now that will actually now rejig my query results. So you can really tailor down the query results, um, you know, as you would like to see them. Uh, thanks very much for watching that brief introduction to uh, Sage ERP ACPAC and its new web-based version 6.0 from Provida Proprietary Limited. Uh, we're Premier Sage uh, ACPAC ERP partner with offices based in Sydney, Melbourne and Brisbane. We will be posting some more uh, videos up on our uh, web, web, uh, website, so please keep an eye out for those. And if you've got any suggestions for other online demos you'd like to see, uh, please contact uh, myself, Steve Ryder, srider at provider.com.au. Thank you.